Today, I want to share with you one of those little secrets that not many people talk about, but when you find the right project with the right tools, mm, it is a thing of beauty to behold. And that is how to add a progressive edge blur to DaVinci Resolve. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world would you want to add blur to the edges of your frames? And the reason why is this is a characteristic of some very charactery anamorphics as well as more vintage lenses where the center of the lens is sharp, but as you get further and further out, it starts to lose focus. And this is not some fringe concept. Uh, a few months back, Steve Yedlin actually did a talk where he talked about some of the elements in his look building toolkit. And he talked about how adding this little bit of a blur towards the edges of the frame is one of the tools that he has. It's one of his textural tools that he uses. Greg Frazier, another really well-respected cinematographer, often seeks out lenses that do this for him rather than do it in post. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So right here we have a frame from the Batman and uh, the Batman is such a greedy, beautiful movie and it's not necessarily a super sharp film. There's a lot of just beautiful softness built into it. But you'll notice as we get towards the edges of the frame, you know, we have in focus right here. You can see little Batman's little ears. The further we go to the edge of the frame, the more we start to get the focus falling off. And if we go to this side as well, do you see how blurry these pillars are here? This is the effect I'm talking about. You can also see this at another point in the film during this interview. Uh, once again, the center is fairly sharp, but the further you go out, look at this fence. The fence starts getting super blurry right here, fairly sharp. The further you go out on either side, we get a lot of this blur. Here's just a, a frame from Dune, and this is a much more subtle example, but if you look at this center window, it's all fairly sharp, but the further you get to the edge of the frame, the more you're getting this little bit of a, a focus fall off in a really beautiful character -y way. There's a number of ways to go about actually getting this effect. So if you were to try to do it with lenses, uh, Greg Frazier actually talked about in the Batman, them seeking out detuned lenses, lenses with these purposeful imperfections to get this kind of dirtying up of the sides of the lens. Uh, I've also seen people put filters in front of the lens and put like petroleum jelly along the outsides or other different materials there to help the light just kind of filter in in strange ways. Now, I highly encourage cinematographers who want an effect like this to go seek out lenses that give them that character. However, in post-production, sometimes we need to be able to adapt in case production didn't capture it this way. Now, if you've ever tried solving this solution yourself, there's a good chance you've run into an issue. And here's the problem we run into in DaVinci Resolve. So I've pulled up a grid here because I think it really accents the problem for us. Uh, if you've tried to do this, you've probably done something along these lines. You've pulled up the lens blur, and uh, I know there's a lot of preference built into which blur you prefer. I just think that this is a really nice one. Uh, you might have done something like this. You pull open a power window here, you know, you feather it out, and then you invert it. Let me shrink this a little smaller just to show you the issue we're running into. As I zoom in, take a look at how this progresses from sharp to blurry. I'm going to click off this window. Notice we're not actually seeing an increase in blurriness. We're just kind of seeing two layers, a sharp layer and a blurred layer, and they're just fading over each other. Do you see that? We're not actually getting a progressive blur where it goes like from zero blur to one to two to three to four. And this isn't just a problem in theory. Let me show you what this looks like when we apply it to actual footage. Now I have some uh, basic color management here turned on and I'm gonna zoom in over here to the left and look at this fence, for example. So we have this blur set up. Let me uh, adjust the window and look at this. The fence doesn't really get more blurry if I, uh, if I soften, if I reduce the softness a little bit here. Do you see how it's not really progressing from sharp to slightly blurry to slightly more than to the complete blur? This is a massive issue and looks super cheap. One common way that people will try to solve this is by using multiple power windows. So they'll put a smaller power window on the screen with a very subtle blur, and they'll kind of create multiple layers of this with increasing amounts of blur as you get further out to the side. But one of the issues you've run into if you've tried to experiment around with this technique is it's not very intuitive to use and it's not quick to experiment with. If you want to adjust the blur, you've kind of got to adjust multiple layers of the blur and changing the aspect ratio can sometimes be a pain. It's a fine solution, but we really need something better. So wouldn't it be nice if the blur, rather than fading between sharp and blurry, actually increased the blur amount the closer to the edge you go? So it'd make more sense if we could pump in a mat to this and it would adjust along the way. But the problem is the, the lens blur effect really doesn't work that way. So if I were to take, you know, if let's say I make a little power window here and I go about uh, inverting it, I kind of check my key, we see we have that uh, kind of vignette shape. It's, if I pump that into the second input, 
you'll notice it doesn't take that as a mat internally. Even if I try applying it to the, uh, the key, it's gonna give us that fading effect rather than the increase of blur. But doesn't it just feel like this should work? We should be able to take a power window that gives us a key and how that key works from black to white should allow us to increase the blur amount. Well, it doesn't work with lens blur, but there actually is another blur effect in DaVinci Resolve that uses the lens blur internally, but allows you to input a mat. And you know what that is? the tilt shift effect. So take a look at this. I'm going to decompose this little compound node that was holding my solution. Basically in node one, we have just exactly like what I had before, a power window in the shape of a vignette. However, we're taking the key output and pumping it into the second triangle, which under the depth of field for the tilt shift blur effect, we can take the map source from the second input. Now watch what happens to this fence as we move back and forth. All of a sudden, blur is now increasing. It is moving dynamically, getting more and more blurry as we get to the edge of the vignette. And let's even look at kind of the, uh, the, the roof here. Isn't that a beautiful effect we're getting? We're finally getting these little out of focus areas, maybe this little bokeh, that as we get towards the edge of the power window, they're increasing in blurriness. This isn't that whole fade, that two layer fade effect. What we're getting is exactly the effect we're looking for. Let's do a little comparison between these two samples just to show you how much of a difference this truly makes. So I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the first method we were using. So this is the, uh, the really bad method where uh, we kind of have the fading from sharp to blurry in two different layers. So we have something like this, let me grab a still, and then I'm gonna do our uh, new and improved method. All right, let's look at it before and after. There's the before and there's the after. Isn't it a mind blowing difference? Now there's a bunch of things that I really like about this tilt shift blur. And just for the record, I am setting this up in a more extreme way than you would probably use it on your project. You probably wanna dial the blur strength back a lot. It's just on YouTube in a smaller window, it makes a lot more sense to over exaggerate this so you can see the effect. But one of the things that just makes this tilt shift blur so wonderful is you'll notice that the blur type is the lens blur. So we're actually given a lot of control within these parameters. Take a look at this. There's this highlight slider. When it comes to these elements kind of on top of the barn here, we can control how much they peek through. So if we don't like it, we could drop them out all the way. We could just keep a little bit of them around. I think that uh, keeping it all the way there is really awesome, but that's a wonderful little bit of control you have. Here's another one, the anamorphism slider. I love this. So by default, it blurs in a very spherical way. So similar to how spherical lenses would blur in a very even circular way. But one of the things I love is kind of that elongated anamorphic bokeh. Well, you can make that happen. Just slide the anamorphic slider down and you'll get that elongated look. If I move it to 0.5, you know, that's what I was using before as the example, you get that wonderful effect of slightly more vertical blur than horizontal blur. Now, while you're more than welcome to build this all yourself, I will take a power grade of this setup and I'll put it on my free resource page. So if you don't wanna try rebuilding this from scratch, you're more than welcome to go find it there, download it and import it into your project. When I actually use this on projects, unless we're going for some really crazy like dream sequence look, usually what I'll do is I'll scale this up a lot more and then dial back the blur quite a bit. Maybe something closer to like, you know, a two or let's see what a three looks like in here. Yeah, even a three, you're starting to get a lot of effect on the sides of the image. So figure out what you like, what's the kind of boundary that it fits within for you but I really enjoy the results of this combination right here. To be fair, this is a little bit of a DIY solution. This isn't exactly how the tilt shift blur was intended to be used, but in my opinion, it's one of the best built-in solutions we have right now for DaVinci Resolve. I hope that Resolve adds a function like this that allows us to use this edge blur as intended, but for now, it's a pretty great solution. At the moment of this video's release, I know there are some other artists out there working on DCTLs to do similar things, but one of the things about DCTLs is they often really struggle with blur actions. They're not necessarily built and optimized for it. So I would highly encourage you, if you find those out there, give them a try. I just, I haven't had good luck as of today. Once again, you can hop over to my free resource page and download this power grade and keep it wherever you keep your tools. I will promise you there is coming a day where you want this effect on one of your films. And can I tell you, it will feel so good just to drag and drop it in your project rather than trying to figure this out in front of a client. Just give the power grade a download, see if it helps you. So what are your thoughts on this progressive lens edge blur? Is this something you'd like to use on your future projects? Make sure to let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hitting that like button helps let me know. And if you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss any future content. All right, 
I'll see you in the next one.